Hello everyone and welcome to a quick showcase of the latest system that I added to the marketplace uh, which is the Flying AI Pathfinding and I basically just uh, created a solution that does not use the nav mesh or like any predetermined path where the AI can basically um, check the environment and check for obstacles and basically find a way to go around them um, until it reaches a target location. So what I have over here is uh, my example uh, AI pawn, which is basically um, you know just an actor. Uh, it is of the type pawn, but it works with a normal actor as well. And I basically just added my system component over here. It has just a very simple mesh and uh, just an outer collision, so I give uh, some space so it doesn't get stuck on walls and stuff. And basically, I just call the on the event begin play. I call on for my component server move to, and basically. Um, I'm going to move to the target location. In the target location, I have um, added the target location here to a target point. And if I find that, it's just on the other side of all these obstacles over here. And uh, right now, if I click play, in a couple of seconds, the um, shape over here is going to start moving. And you can see, basically, uh, I have debug enabled. You can see that he's basically tracing all over uh, in every direction, basically checking where obstacles are and basically choosing the best path uh, based on the tracing that he's doing. And as you can see, he's going around all the obstacles until it reaches that target point that I set. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't really need much um, and it will uh, reach the target location. There you go. Now, just to quickly show you uh, all the settings that the system has, basically this is the finder collision channel. Uh, the finder is basically those traces that you see uh, to block geometry, and basically all this geometry is blocking uh, the camera channel, so I want to use that. This is the movement speed of the actor, uh, which I set to a thousand, but obviously you can do whatever name you want, or number. Uh, the trace radius is basically, um, uh, let me go back and show you, the trace radius is basically the, um, the radius of this uh, each trace that is coming out of the ship. So you can see that it's basically this radius over here. So it's basically a capsule, um, a capsule check basically, and it's checking from our ship into the uh, into the direction. Now, why it's important that this radius is at least um, of the same uh, width of your object. Uh, the reason for that is um, that if you do uh, a very thin trace it might uh, want to go through for example an edge from over here to here and if it traces right through the edge and it tries to move it's going to get stuck because the um, the collision is going to clip this little edge here but if its width is uh, big enough it's going to count this as a it so he's going to know that he has to go around it and he's not going to get stuck on the edge that's why this number should always be at least the off the um, the width of your object over here um, the location reach acceptance is basically uh, how far from the target point um, does it consider that it already reached the, the location. Uh, you can probably put this to zero, but I like to have some margin, so I left a meter for it. Uh, this is the trace debugging that you're seeing, which we can shut off. Uh, the rotation speed is uh, basically how quickly does the ship um, uh, change direction, uh, like the actual visual rotation where, for example, it goes from here to here. Uh, so it's there's a little bit of smoothing to the rotation. So it's not immediate. Uh, this is the path trace interval. This is basically um, uh, how many times does it trace per second. Now 0 0.5 means it checks two times. If you put this to one, it basically it's once every second. If you put, for example, five seconds, it's going to check every uh, every five seconds. So um, you know for accuracy, this should be less than a second. But obviously, you can change this number for performance if you need a lot of um, objects that are using this pathfinding system. Uh, the location explore threshold. Now, this location um, is basically part of the complex pathfinding, which I can show you. And basically, the system works with um, moving forward. So it needs to move to the object to its target point on the other side, and it basically checks obstacles and it goes around. Uh, the thing is, um, this system does not work on itself if it can cannot go forward in any way. So, for example, if I put my ship over here in the middle, uh, it's going to be forced to go back. Uh, to go back uh, so it can proceed. Now, uh, you need to turn this for complex pathfinding, which means, I basically mean by that is that the, the object might need to go back into its route and it's not always going forward. If that happens, um, it's going to get stuck and you can enable this. 
so it actually tries to find a way out of this place. Now it's still a bit, um, I, I don't want to say buggy, but you can see that he's kind of going, uh, you know, he's snapping a little bit uh, left and right until he finds a way out. So this system is not 100% complete, I'm going to have to tune fine it, but for now it works, although, you know, as you just saw, it's not perfect. Uh, and what this location explore threshold means, it basically means that um, he's basically storing every place that he already been. So, for example, he does not get stuck infinite into one point. He's going to know that you're, you, he was already there. He tried to escape through there. So he's going to basically store that location and try another one. And he's going to keep trying until, as you saw, he found a way out through the left side. And this is basically the size of the region. So in this case, it's 10 meters. So every 10 meters, he's going to store that he already uh, tried to escape on that location. Um, this is a default value, but you can try it multiple. And this is the max explorer location stored, um, because if you have this number, uh, if this number is too big, you can start having performance issues if you have like dozens of flying AIs. Um, and basically, uh, I, I found that 50 works well. So basically, if the, it goes past this number, it's basically going to delete the oldest place he has been and keep storing uh, through the new ones. And basically, I don't think um, like uh, that you need more than 50. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, now, trace vertical obstacles. If I do this and enable debugging, what I mean by vertical obstacle is that, as you saw, the trace is only kind of horizontal to the path of the flying object. But if I enable this, uh, you can see that he's going to start firing some traces uh, into the hair. What this means is that he's going to be able to find... Um, if you get like if there's a huge wall and instead of trying to go around it he's going to try to go above it because he's going to trace and see that he can go above and i can probably do something to show you so if i select this stuff over here and just keep duplicating it like this uh, there we go so i just want to create a huge obstacle over here in the side And hopefully he's going to do what I want him to do. Uh, so let's move him to the right a little bit. Over here. And if I click play. Oh, no, he's actually trying to go through. Oh, there you go. It's kind of going above. There you go. So he basically checked that uh, it's cheaper for him to go above the obstacle instead of trying to go around. Now, he almost got there because it's in the direction of the move to point. Uh, but you can see that he's going to keep moving there. And once he reaches that area, he's going to just uh, basically shoot down. There you go. Until it reaches the point. So you can kind of see how that works. Uh, so if you want your object to avoid stuff vertically, you can enable this. And this is basically the vertical angle tracing. So you saw that the traces were firing kind of this direction instead of going exactly up. And that's the 45 degrees. If it's 90, it's going to go straight above. If it's 10, it's going to go slightly above the horizontal path. So you can kind of uh, do whatever um, angle you want because this is going to depend on how you construct your level. So if is if your level is like 100% vertical or stuff like that, you might need to do a bigger number over here. If the elevations are small, you might want to lower this value over here. And the vertical trace range multiplier is basically the length of the trace. So you can see that the normal traces are of the size of um, the point to its target location. But for the vertical pad, that might be a little bit too much. So this is basically meaning that this distance is just going to be 25%. That's, the that's why the multiplier is 0 0.25. If you want it to be of the same size, it's 1. If you want it to be 2 times larger, it's 2. But uh, you're probably not going to need to change this number. I think 0 0.25 works perfectly fine. And, and yeah, that's the system. So you have all these settings to customize. Now, the only limitation with the system right now, um, other than, you know, the the little complex pathfinding that you saw, which is still, uh, you know, not 100% perfect, uh, is basically if you want your, um, your flying AI to go through, for example, let's imagine that he's going flying through uh, the city and you want your drone to go for example into the subway and the subway is just a little hole in your landscape basically and it needs to go below that right now the system cannot do that it cannot go through a huge vertical uh, um, 
a huge vertical obstacle, for example, this round, imagine that there's a hole, he's not going to be able to detect that hole right now, but I am working on the system and the next update is going to be having that, uh, where basically you can mark those little spots so he can move uh, vertically into different levels. This is useful if you're, for example, doing a 2D side game, where you know you want a flying AI drone to go like between levels uh, vertically on your screen, or you know a lot of other uses. Um, but right now I think that the product is good enough. For example, if you want uh, an helicopter to go through uh, city buildings, uh, you know if you're doing a war game and you want to avoid like you know trees and stuff, this uh, system will work perfectly because it like where the system is at its best is going through um, you know exactly. Uh, smaller obstacles that are like in a defined space that are taller than they are uh, larger to the sides for example this kind of obstacles that you see in this level um, and yeah that's gonna be it so hopefully you guys um, uh, like the system if you guys have any questions related to it uh, or if you have any requests or suggestions to make the system better let me know and yeah uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye bye